In this lesson, we're going to talk about sequences and summation notation, specifically sequences that are finite, and then also we'll talk about a couple of specific ones, such as a recursive sequence, and then um, also talk about summation notation. So the first definition is a sequence, um, finite or infinite. Um, you're going to have terms whose domain consist of non-negative integers. So you can get out uh, negative values, but your uh, domain is going to be non-negative. The first example I want to look at, it says write the first four terms of the sequence whose nth term or general term is given. So our first part, part A, it says a sub n equals 2 times n plus 5. So again, it wants the first four terms of the sequence. So unless it otherwise specifies, you're going to always start with plugging in 1. So we'll first start off with a sub 1. And that means you're going to plug in 1 for n. So we'll go ahead and just substitute 1 in for n. And you can go ahead and simplify using order of operations. So for our first term, we're going to get 7. Then you're going to follow the same pattern. You're going to find your next term, a sub 2. So we're plugging in 2 for n. And again, go ahead and use order of operations to simplify. And finally, again, we wanted the first four terms, and we started with a sub 1, so that would make a sub 2, a sub 3, and then your last term is going to be a sub 4. And typically, if it says write the first uh, four terms of a sequence, if it wants it in a sequence form, usually you'll write it as a list of values. So there's your four terms. Part B, it says a sub n equals negative 1 to the n, all divided by 2 to the n plus 1. So again, we still want to do those first four terms, so we'll start by plugging in 1. Sometimes it'll specify um, start with a sub 0, so then if you're doing four terms, it would be a sub 0, a sub 1, a sub 2, and a sub 3. But again, it didn't specify otherwise, so we'll start with a sub 1. Plug in 1 anywhere you see n. So in the numerator, you're getting negative 1 to the 1, or just negative 1. In the denominator, you have 2 to the 1, and then you're going to add 1. So you have 2 to the 1 is 2, and you get the fraction, negative 1 third. For your a sub 2, go ahead and plug in 2 for n. Again, in the numerator, this time because your n value that you're plugging in is even, it's making that numerator become a positive one. In the denominator you have 2 squared or 4, plus 1 makes 5. And continue your process of substituting the next n in and simplifying appropriately. Again, when it was a sub 3, the n value um, in the numerator you're plugging in is odd, keeping that numerator negative versus a sub 4, the n value is even. And we'll list our answer as a sequence of values. In our future, we'll refer to this as an alternating sequence um, because your terms are changing from negative to a positive to a negative to a positive. For this last one, we have b sub n equals negative one-third to the n. And we're going to plug in our values. You have negative one-third to the 1, so your value will be negative one-third. 
for B sub 2. Your power is even, making your term positive. For B sub 3, again, the power is odd, making your term negative. And again, 1 to the third power, and 3 to the third power is 1 over 27. And for our last one, we get a positive 1 over 81. And here is our sequence of four terms, negative 1 third, 1 ninth, negative 1 over 27, and 1 over 81. To continue, we have a definition. It says a recursive formula defines the nth term of a sequence as a function of the previous terms. And so basically if you have a recursive formula, in order to find um, a following term, you're going to need to use one of the terms before it. So this example kind of shows that. It says find the first four terms of the sequence in which, and we're given a sub 1, a sub 1 equals 3. And then it gives us this formula that a sub n is equal to 2 times a sub n minus 1, and then you're going to add 5. And it gives a condition that n must be greater or equal to 2. So it says find the first four terms, and we're already given the first term. So that's nice. Um, next, we're going to find the next term, a sub 2. And I just want to kind of point out right here, this says a sub n. And right here, it says a sub n minus 1. That would be the term right before it. You can, again, think of that relationship as to find a term. You're going to take the term before it and times by 2 and then add 5. It also works that if you kind of think about, again, you're given a sub 1, you need to find a sub 2. That means that n is equal to 2. So then you can actually just take 2 and plug it in for n. If you want to do it that way. So then if you kind of simplify this, you get 2 and then a sub 1 plus 5. And again, that's what we were talking about, that to find the next term, you're using the one before it. So a sub 2 is equal to 2. a sub 1 is 3, so we're going to substitute that in. And now order of operations. You get 11 for the second term. To find the third term, again, you can think of it as take 2 and then plug in the term before it, which we just got 11. And then add 5 is the pattern. And then to find a sub 4, n equals 4 and you're still taking 2 and you're plugging in the term before it. And so your three, four terms are 3, 11, 27, and 59. Just a heads up, um, with recursive formulas, um, like this one specifically said a sub n, and then a sub n minus 1. Again, the term right before the a sub n. But it could be any variation. This could be a sub n, and this could be a sub n minus 2, which would be the term before it. Or again, they could come up with um, any scenario. So just be aware of what it is you're plugging in. Or again, you can always do the thing where you actually take n and plug it in, if that makes more sense to you, to know which term it is you're using. Okay, we're going to look at the definition for factorial. It says, if n is a positive integer, we're going to read it as n factorial, is defined as n with an exclamation mark. And again, its def definition is n factorial equals n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, and again, you keep going down until you go down to 3 times 2 times 1. 
Also, by definition, um, 1 factorial equals 1 and 0 factorial equals 1. Be really aware of that. 0 factorial does not equal 0. 0 factorial equals 1 by definition. And again, for fun, I'm sure you can look up the proof on that. <laughs> okay, uh, note I have 5 factorial. So again, in this case, 5 factorial means that n is 5. So we're going to start with 5 times, and then you do n minus 1. So 5 minus 1 would be 4 times 3 times 2. And then you always stop when you get down to 1. So 5 factorial, when you multiply that all out, you get 120. 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 24. 3 factorial, same thing, you're just going down, start with 3, then 2 times 1, or 6. 2 factorial, 2 times 1 is 2. So right here I just wrote 2 that I want to make sure to emphasize the difference between. This says 4 times 2 factorial, so just be aware that it's 4 times, and 2 factorial would be 2 times 1, so you end up getting 8, versus, again, this is different in that it's the quantity 4 times 2 factorial. So 4 times 2 is 8 factorial, and at that point then you're going 8 times 7 all the way down. And what did I get? 40,320. So just be aware when there's parentheses what's being grouped or not grouped. Okay, so this example says write the first three terms of the sequence whose nth term is given by a sub n equals 20 divided by the quantity n plus 1 factorial. We want three terms and it doesn't specify otherwise um, so we'll start with a sub 1. So we're going to substitute 1 in for n. And we're getting 20 over 2 factorial. 2 factorial is 2 times 1, and then you can reduce and get 10. For a sub 2, We have just 20 in the numerator. In the denominator, we have 3 factorial. And so, same thing, you're going to take the 3 factorial and multiply it out. And at this point, that is where you can reduce the 20 and the 2, so then you're getting 10 thirds. When finding a sub 3, same thing, we're going to plug in 3 for n. down here, make sure you add that, you get 4 factorial. So, just be aware, don't make the mistake of dividing the 20 and the 4 and getting 5, because this isn't just 4, it's 4 factorial, so just be mindful of that. So we have 20 divided by 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and here's where you can start reducing um, our 20 and 4, and there you get 5, 6. So our first three terms of this sequence would be 10, 10 thirds, and 5 sixths. In this example, we're going to go back to looking at factorial expressions. So we're going to evaluate each of these. Part A says 14 factorial over 2 factorial times 12 factorial. So what you want to do whenever you have um, factorials in the numerator and denominator, especially if there's a bigger factorial in the numerator. You can start by counting down, so 14 factorial equals 14 times 13 times 12, and technically you would just keep going times 11, 10, 9, all the way down to 1. However, you always want to check the denominator because if you have the same value showing up in the denominator as a factorial, they're going to represent the same values. And so it's super convenient that you can cancel out those 12 factorials, because again, they're both representing 12 times 11 times 10 times 9, dot, 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 all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. So you can reduce that in the fraction. And just 
to be careful always at this point write out any factorials oops that's supposed to be a one that are left so you can then reduce values because you have a product on top and a product in the denominator so you can reduce your fraction and seven times thirteen what are we at ninety one okay um, for part B we have, it's a little more generic looking, it says the quantity n plus 3 factorial over n minus 1 factorial. So you're going to um, approach it the same way. Anything factorial breaks down to itself, and then you times by one less value. So you're taking this expression and you're subtracting 1, which would be actually n plus 2, and again, you're going to take this, you're going to subtract 1, which gets you to n plus 1. And you're going to keep going till again, these problems are totally rigged, um, so that something in the denominator will cancel out. So if we just keep going, we're going to take n plus 1, subtract 1, you get n. And then again, take this expression, subtract 1, and there we go, n minus 1 factorial, because it continues to go down, generically speaking, down to 3 times 2 times 1. But again, you're looking for something that will match up with the denominator. And again, works out great. Those reduce. And you're left with this really large expression. And you leave your answer like that.